One. How's it going, everybody? It's Jay Nanda of Alamo True Metal coming to you from the Aztec Theater, actually the hotel next door to Mokara. And we are a pleasure to have a man who needs no introduction, but is always a fixture here on Alamo True Metal and in San Antonio, Texas. He's about to go on stage in about uh, two and a half, three hours or so with the Big Rock Hits Tour, the voice of three and plus decades of Queens writing fantastic solo material. Of course, one of my favorite singers of all time, Mr. Jeff Tate. It's always a pleasure to see you. How are you, sir? I'm good, Jay. Great to see you. Pardon me while I shut my phone off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we're live. Yeah, no problem it's here. Like crazy. It's all good. You are in demand. So, Big Rock Hits Tour, of course, like we mentioned. You are here with Mark Daly. Um, fantastic. Uh, we, we, this is our fourth interview over the years, but it's actually our first time on camera since 2014 here at the Aztec. So, it's been a while. I just wanted to catch up with you on things. And because of the fact I've done several interviews with you before, I'm going to do my best to ask you questions today that you normally don't get, oh, hopefully. Um, so yeah, just you know, okay. just make it vibrant and interesting, of course. Okay. But uh, I do want to start with the fact that recently you, uh, it was reported that you had a heart issue, uh, maybe yeah. over the summer. And you've always been such a fit, healthy guy. I'm sure that was a surprising, scary thing for you. You're obviously well enough to be on tour right now, but can you just kind of describe a little bit how I scary had, or interesting that I had open heart surgery. Wow. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. I didn't even know I was, I had a problem, you know, because uh, it's so, it comes on so subtly, you know, and uh, I just thought for a guy my age, it was probably normal that I was huffing and puffing going upstairs, right? Yeah. Well, come to find out I had a, a bad heart valve, and so, uh, I did a bunch of tests with a bunch of uh, doctors and they ended up going to uh, Germany to get the procedure done. And uh, they did an amazing job and uh, that was back in June. Yeah. So now it's like six months into it and I, I feel great. I can't believe how much better I feel. I didn't even know I was not feeling great. I just thought it was my normal. Yeah. Right? So uh, where I used to huff and puff going upstairs, now I'm running up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is desirable, you know? Yeah, and of course, I mean, Richie Faulkner had, of Judas Priest had his scare last year on yeah. stage, so it was just, yeah. the first thing I thought of was him when I read about yours and just wondering what... Yeah, luckily I just didn't have to uh, experience that in a public scenario, you know? Yeah, yeah, but obviously, so you, it's great to see you as well, of course. For those who might be watching you in an interview this way for the first time ever, who knows? Uh, something that we have discussed in the past is the fact that uh, San Antonio was the third city, I believe, Queens right, yep. ever played mm -hmm. in 1982. So you have been coming here literally for 40 years. Yes. But behind Seattle, your hometown, of course, and Portland, Oregon, I believe. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about any significance to you? It is your relationship with San Antonio, the history, and just coming here all these years. Well, funny enough, this morning I was standing out on the uh, sidewalk signing so autographs on, folk, on albums that people had brought me. And uh, a couple of guys were trying to tell me about San Antonio. Besides, if you go over here, this this restaurant is <laughs> <laughs> Like you were saying, I've been here a few times. <laughs> and over the years, I mean, just the radio airplay and how Queens Park got their music started originally here. I mean, just can you talk about how oh, yeah. significant well, the, that is? The too. fans in San Antonio have always been incredibly supportive of the music and the, the different stages of the band throughout the years. And then now that I'm solo, uh, incredible support for the music, you know? And it's uh, it's like, when I come here, it's like going home. You know, it feels like that. I have, uh, you can feel all the love and the support from people when they walk out on that stage every night. And there's always people standing outside the theater, you know, wanting to say hi and get their photo taken. And that's, that's great, because some places you go, you don't have that, you know? But here, it's like people know me, you know? Yeah, that's great. I yeah. saw a few on the river walk this afternoon as I went for lunch, you know? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and just the last time we saw you was last November here at the Aztec where you played Rage Forward and Empire in their yeah. entirety. Was that November? Yes, okay. uh, with Kurt Dimer. And uh, I know you uh, are in his song too for Burn Together. It's yeah. really cool. Um, this time, of course, you're doing a more uh, encapsulating show, I would mm -hmm. say. I, I'm not one who looks at set lists, so Bobby's probably going to smile at me because we always joke about that at the same time. But I do know you have returned to playing Queen of the Reich. Oh, and yeah, I'm yeah. wondering, uh, can you tell us why? Because that's a song that you had said in years past you couldn't really relate to anymore. Why are you? I can't relate to it all. And that's why I, I wore a Santa Claus hat <laughs> during, the, <laughs> during the song. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's pe one of people's favorite songs. And so I, I kind of uh, put my own feelings about it off to the side and I sort of try to see it from other people's point of view. You know? mm -hmm. 
It's a song people like to hear, you know. Yeah. And it's fun to play. The band likes to play it, and we have a good time, and uh, you know, presenting the song. So it's it takes it's taken on a different meaning for me now. Yeah, I love the tours where you come by, where you mix things up, and you do things different, like the cabaret, or you just mix up the set list. I remember there was a show here ten years ago, uh, Thanksgiving Eve, backstage live, outdoors in the parking lot, where they overbooked you and the band Epica. Mm -hmm. But you played that show, and you played like uh, "Until I Needed You," uh -huh. the, you know, a rarity from the Q2K sessions. I mean, that was so awesome. And um, I personally would love to hear songs from Q2K. I love that album. I think it's very underrated. Yeah, we're uh, playing. Uh, Party at the right side of the line time. and Liquid Sky. You are awesome. Yeah. So yeah, don't look at Sedless. So I'm surprised. That's awesome. But something like I said, like you aren't normally asked certain things. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some collaborations you've done, mm. uh, such as the Kurt Dimer one, but also uh, Tobias Salmon and Avantasia. Yeah. You have fantastic. Have you heard that one that just came out? Uh, not the new one. No, I have not. It just came out. What's it called? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the name. Did you put you on the spot? Um, <laughs> I know Seduction of Decay is fantastic from Ghost Lights. You got the yeah. two from uh, Moon Glow in 2019, uh, yeah. Invincible and Alchemy. Yeah. And then you did a group collaboration on that album, the Piper Gates. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I did not have not heard a new one the yet. The new one that's just come out. Um, I guess she has a a mile long name too, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, and I just heard the song the other day, it showed up on my phone as I was driving down the road, <laughs> and uh, it, it was the song I sang on, um, and now I can't remember the name of it. But, uh, I will look for it. Yeah, sorry. No <laughs> worries. Can you talk about your relationship with Tobias and how, you know, he's had a mass amount of singers, but you are a repeated pop-up with every new album. I'm sure it's, uh, and it's Sweet Oblivion as well, the two albums you've done with Sweet yeah. Oblivion. Yeah. Just talk about all these, how, how do you find time well, to do all these projects and the relationships you Tobias have? is a really, really a cool guy, and I love his project. He um, invited me on a world tour in 2019, which I did, which was so much fun. Um, we went to some places I'd never been before. That was really great. And a uh, really great camaraderie amongst everybody in the band and the musicians that are singing as well. Um, just a real fun show, you know? And because, I don't know, it's so different from what I do, you know? So uh, I liked it from that aspect. And the music is very different too, which I, I like. Um, yeah, I just have a great time. And, and Twice is an amazing person. He's just one of those people that you wouldn't think about him being such a powerful singer, you know, but when he does it, I mean, every night he hits these impossible notes and he does a very long show. And although other people sing with him, he sings the whole show, basically, you know. And uh, it's tough, challenging stuff to do. Yeah. And he does it every night, every single night. There's this one song that we were playing uh, at the beginning of the tour, uh, like the first first song of the tour, and it has this incredibly high note on it, and all the singers, we'd be waiting to hear, okay, is he going to hit that note tonight? And every night he hit it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we're going to have a great show, because, you know, he's a great voice, you know? Yeah. He's just very strong. Yeah. Of course, Tobias Sam, uh, Avantasia is vocalist, and of Ed Guy as well, does these three-hour shows, he put out Avantasia albums recently, with a lot of uh, collaborations from various singers, such as Dee Snyder, Michael Kiske. And that's why I wanted to ask Jeff about his contributions on those records as well. And how did you get hooked up with the Sweet Oblivion guys? You have two albums now with them. Oh, well, I was signed to Frontier Records for uh, my Operation Mind Crime album series. And um, uh, the president of the record label asked me, I have this project. Would you be interested in like listening to it? And I did, and I liked it. And so I got involved, and we're actually beginning to start the third one in January. So uh, I'm looking forward to that because it's uh, it's cool stuff. It's uh, working with different producers, different songwriters, uh, different musicians on each record. You know, so uh, I don't actually know who I'm going to play with on this one coming up. So I'm looking forward to having those meetings in January. For those who haven't checked out your tour yet, or maybe are looking to see you live for the first or second time in whatever city they're in, uh, can you talk a little bit about your band? You probably don't get asked about them much. Uh, My guys, band? Yeah, like Kieran Robinson on guitar, oh, uh, Smiling Jack Ross, Daniel Laverde on drums, yeah. uh, because most of the people out there are familiar with your nationally known Operation Mind Crime people that you've had in the past, and uh -huh. of course your former Queensryche mates, but the band that you have now full of young international flavor. Talk yeah, about that. well everybody in my band, is from a different place. Yeah. <laughs> well, in fact, I've got two Scotsmen in the band, uh, Kieran Robertson and Jack Ross are from Scotland. Uh, James Brown is from Ireland. Uh, Danny Laverde is American like me. 
Uh, Alex Hart is Australian, and Bruno uh, Safiera is from uh, Brazil. So it's kind of an international band, you know? It's cool. Yeah, and I mean, is Kieran your son-in-law, I believe? No. No? Or no. He's, okay. I thought he was going to be for a while, but it doesn't work. Okay, so I wasn't quite wrong. Okay. All right, so what is the biggest, um, not necessarily challenge, but for you on this tour, because the last couple of times, like you said, you heard you play Rage for Order and Empire. You did Operation Minecraft a couple of tours in the past with that, and uh, now you're just encapsulating everything. Just what's your mindset, especially after your heart scare, uh, for this tour? Is it just a big celebration of your past, or...? Just how, what, what have you been Well, the idea for this tour was really just to sort of uh, uh, focus on the singles I've had over the years and play all the songs that perhaps people are familiar with, um, the songs they heard on the radio, the songs they saw on MTV, um, those kind of songs, right? And so there's a lot of them, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so it was a fun set list to put together, although very easy because you, know, you get to pick the singles, right? Yeah. So, told you what you had to do, you know, yeah. and uh, it goes over really well, and we've been having a great time, and we're doing this short uh, three-week run now up until Christmas, we take a break, and we go to Europe, and Scandinavia, and Australia, and then we come back in the spring, and we finish the, the U.S. tour, lots of snow melts. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome, well, we're going to keep it short and sweet, Jeff's got to get ready for sound check here at the Aztec Theater with Mark Daly, he's going to be playing uh, the Big Rock Hits Tour to Finish it all off. I have something for you. We are doing this a week before Christmas as a thank you to you for all the years of great music and uh, the interviews that we have done. I just want to thank you. You got me a present. I've got you a present. And no, I did not get it from Walmart. It's just a bag. This is for you. And it's a catch-22 because you're the expert in this field. Well, thank you. Wow, it's very you, heavy. You already know what it is before you open it once you pop it out of the bag. But uh, you're, you're the expert in this field, and you have your own brand of this sort of thing, but I wanted to give it to you. You may not even like it or drink it. It's a bicycle. Since you, have your, since you have your own brand, uh, since you are the connoisseur of wine, but as uh, just to thank you for just being the professional you are and one of my favorite singers Very ever. Nice. Oh, what a beautiful uh, I hope you or somebody in, in the band or crew can appreciate it on the bus. Thank you. Thank you very so, much. There you go. Yeah, I'll, I'll drink it and think of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it up there for every seal. Uh, have you heard of that particular no, brand before? No, I haven't. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And how is the Insania uh, business going for you? Oh, the wine is flowing. Yep. <laughs> we have uh, new vintages out now and uh, all set up, and you can order them on our, our website, uh, jefftate.com. There's a little button you push called Insania, and it takes you to the, the uh, winery. and make your order and have it shipped to you. Awesome. Well, Jeff, thank you so much again. Thank you, Jay. We will see you in the photo pit. Happy it's always holidays. a pleasure. Happy holidays to you. Yeah, thank Welcome you. back to San Antonio. Thank I'm glad you. you're healthy and happy and heavy. For Jeff Tate, this is Jay Nanda of Alamo True Battle reminding you, don't hang them out to dry. Hold them up high.